Brought to you by DCP Player version 2, available now. Hi, this is James Gardner, the Senior Tech Geek. And in today's video, I'm continuing my videos on the end of film. And I'm going to cover some new low-cost DCI certified projectors that are coming onto the market, which I hope, you know, that this low cost, if you're having a problem converting to digital due to that you can't afford it, maybe these lower cost units will get you over the line. Now let's just quickly cover them. There's, there's um, of course, the Barco, um, Christie and NEC. There's also one from Sony, but Sony's not really in this region and I'm not sure that about, I don't know too much about that projector, so we'll leave that one for someone else to explain. But these new projectors, as you can see here, I'll bring up some pictures. Uh, and we're looking at, you know, Craig from Barco introduced in a previous video that we're looking at 35 retail for his projector in our region. Now, just to give you an idea, uh, the lowest I could get a projector at the moment and player combination uh, would be roughly um, in my region, about 60, sort of 60, 65. So it's a it's a it's a big saving uh, relative because remember this is this projector for thirty five includes the the DCI media player and in this case it's an introduction of a new type of media player called the IMS Integrated Media Server uh, as opposed to the Integrated Media Block which still needed an external server. This server has been moved basically into the media block part. So you've got the media block and a small server squeezed into there. Um, now that's not actually that hard because really all it's really needed, you know, is a bit of bit of brains, a bit of CPU, but it's mostly I/O as it's pushing the I/O from you know the, the DCP stored on the drives into the JPEG 2000 decoder, which pushes it onto the back plane of the of the projector, which goes out onto the screen. And you don't really need a lot of CPU power in there. And, uh, it's made it probably possible to get in there. There's a lot of concern about heat, etc., with uh, that in there. But they seem to have been able to uh, get over those problems. Now, I'll just show you here quickly. Uh, there's a number of, you know, the IMS is an important part of the cost savings of these devices. And this, you know, I want to cover those quickly because uh, there's a bit of differences between them. Uh, you'll notice here on the Barco, where you can just make out here, I haven't really heard the official. Um, uh, uh, what this, where this one's coming from, but I'm pretty sure it's a Dorome based one, and you can actually see three hard drives, the two and a half inch um, traditional type drives used to get in laptops, uh, actually plugging into the side of the projector so they can be easily replaced. Um, and the Christie, for example, it actually is using its own new, it's their only, in, their new internal, well, they've made it themselves, their, their new. Uh, um, media player. So we've got a new media player manufacturer on the market and that's Christie. So we've got Doremi, Barco, DDC, Cube and now Christie for their own projectors. And in their smaller projector they actually build, the, build it into the system and can't be taken out uh, unlike the Barco where you have the option it's like a bigger the bigger projectors you can actually put in an IMB or an external uh, interface. And I expect that's the same with the NEC. I'm not too sure, but I, I hear the NEC may be using the Dorome, but it's a bit of musical chairs at the moment who's doing the best deals, in my opinion. Um, so you can see here, that's a big cost savings. And then there's the introduction of the smaller DLP chip from Texas Instruments, the point uh, six nine. Now the smaller chip allows for a lot of cost savings because of course we're getting into a more domestic sort of size and commodity type parts could possibly be used in the manufacture of the prisms and the light source and the light engine and the light path and uh, that's probably giving us a good light savings and also the lenses the apertures are smaller and the the, it's easy to make the, the glass at the smaller lens sizes, etc. Great reduction in quality, price, sorry, price there, not quality. I'm sure the, the quality is just as good as the bigger projectors. It's just it's easy to achieve at that small size. Um, so that's a really good good uh, overview of why, some of the reasons why it's cheaper and why it's just as good a quality as the bigger projectors. It's a, it's a good development in this industry because of the, the price point for getting 
a DCI system out there has been greatly reduced. Now quickly, the screen sizes. Now these are for small screens, um, and you know the smaller the smaller size of the DLP chip, you know, you know the only certain amount of light can be pushed through them or heat, etc. So the smaller screens are only supported, but you do have um, in the Barco and the Christie. These are very similar uh, uh, sort of um, products. That you can really see from them that the products are based on their their bigger brothers. They've just brought you know the technology down there into these units, and um, you, you can see very common parts between them, and that they actually use a lot of common parts from their bigger brothers in those units. Um, the NEC actually the NEC actually looks, looks very similar. I looked it up. But the the specs on it are very similar to a Delta projector usually used in these cinema um, presentations in some parts of Asia. But it's now got, of course, the higher quality DLP light engine and um, the security aspects or the security aspects of the projector put in there. But it's using the more non, uh, you know, uh, non-commercial type light sources like we use xenons in cinema. It's just using a more domestic based light system with two more domestic type lenses to get its light source. It has a, a more limited light source compared to the the NEC in the Barco, which can have 2K or even 2.4k lamps and down and that's very versatile I like that part of those two product ranges because you can really make the lamp suit the size of your screen getting the optimum um, lamp for the screen and, and that's a you know a very good thing because uh, the optimum lamp means that the lamp just right for your screen so it's cheaper to buy and also the less power the lamp uses usually means it runs a lot longer and of course that will equal better total cost of ownership other aspects are, as usual, the Barco with its non, uh, its reusable filters. While traditionally, the Christie and the NEC have had paper filters and need to be re re replaced and can't be just cleaned by by blowing them out and putting them back in. So that's a something you need to look at. There's little aspects like that you want to keep an eye on, and also if you're getting more technical, you've got the um, Alignment engines in each of them are a little bit different. You've got the proprietary alignment system in the Barco, which is you know, said to be the best. Uh, in the Christie, they've got this new digital alignment, which um, it's of a question mark on that one. We'll get and find out more about how that digital alignment system works. Um, and then uh, I'm not sure about the how the uh, NEC. That's not very. It's not so much information I could find about that unit. Um, but I'm sure they all very work very well. Like the, all the bigger brothers, all the DCI projector manufacturers make good products which can produce beautiful pictures on the screen. All have their slight characteristics and maybe a shave better here, etc. So, but do keep an eye. Go to your best, your favourite integrator and try and find out more information about these projectors. I have a personal preference. You probably picked up in my previous video. I, I quite like the Barco uh, technology-wise. Um, the Christie's aren't so common in my area, so I'm not so familiar with them. And we do have a, quite a lot of NECs in there, but I'm not, you know, the NEC using this new, uh, the domestic light sources and other things like that, I need a lot of um, looking into that, and it's, it's only a certain brightness. It, it, to tell you the truth, it's probably more suitable for certain markets going to the DCI type playback. So they're, they're, they're applicable to different markets as well. So these are, that, you know, that's basically covering these projectors. And the biggest point about these projectors is the new price point. You know, if you want to set up a, a cinema, you can do it for a lot cheaper now, as I've indicated by the prices before. So um, hopefully this will help a lot of the smaller independents who are having might have problems converting to digital, can't afford it uh, to be able to make that jump because we do not want to leave anyone behind. We want to keep this community thriving in many parts of the world. So keep an eye out on all these aspects, but I'm sure you'll be able to see these all at CinemaCon next year. I encourage you to go. It's a one of you know it's a, one of the best places to go if you want to learn about all the technologies and ins, ins and outs of cinema and exhibition, the business. Um, and I'm sure they'll be on display there. Um, so keep an eye out for these projectors. Hopefully they'll get you into digital if you're having problems and you're stressed about moving into the digital era. era. Um, so yeah, next I'll cover more how the, the IMS is affecting the pricing in the larger projectors because that will affect them as well. So keep watching my videos and I hope they help you in making your decision, an informed decision 
in going to digital so you can make the right decision in going to digital and um, yes good luck and catch you in my next video this is James Gardner the Cinetech Geek bye for now